Within on-screen takeoff, you can create a grid layout within your area takeoff. This can be used to calculate the tile count for floors or ceilings, or for things like the length of rebar or grout. The grid is an advanced function of an area condition. To turn it on for any area condition, double-click on it from the Conditions panel on the left side of the screen. That then opens the Condition Properties window. Once there, navigate to the Advanced tab. In the Advanced tab, find the grid field along the right side of the window. Select the checkbox and then define the size of the grid you want to use. The gap field controls the thickness of the lines within the grid. This could be useful for defining the thickness of grout in between tiles, for instance, which can then give you a more accurate tile count. Once you've defined the parameters of the grid, go back to the General tab. On the General tab, define your quantity results. There are a few options in the dropdown that are only relevant when you've added a grid to the condition. These grid specific results are grid length visible, tile count average, and tile count visible. These three results can be selected if you haven't set up a grid, but they only display results once you activate the grid within the Advanced tab. Grid length visible measures the entire interior length of the grid. Tile count average takes the total area of the grid and divides it by the area of a single tile as you defined it in your grid setup. That count remains the same no matter how you lay out your grid. Tile count visible, on the other hand, counts every fully or partially visible tile displaying on the screen. Note that OST counts partially visible tiles as a full tile. This can potentially be the most accurate because you can lay out the grid exactly how you want it, but you should proceed with caution because the system doesn't account for the fact that you might reuse portions of a tile in another area. Click OK to save your changes. To take off an area with a grid is no different than performing takeoff with a normal area condition. You can use the point by point method or click and drag for rectangular areas. The differences begin once the takeoff is complete. Once you've performed the takeoff, first, look at the results. The grid specific quantities now display values. You have additional options to manipulate the grid after you've finished drawing it. This can create greater accuracy within your grid specific quantity results. To modify the grid, first, make sure you're in select mode. If you're in takeoff mode, simply press the space bar to switch into select mode. Then, click on the area you want to modify. Once the area is selected, you can then click the Align Grid button from the list along the right side of the screen. Now, a green line with circles on either end displays. If you hover your mouse over the circle on the left side of the line, and then click and drag, you can change the basic horizontal and vertical alignment of the grid. When you do this, notice that the grid only moves within the perimeter you previously defined for the area. Release the mouse once the grid is aligned the way you want it. You have an additional alignment option if you use the circle on the right side of the green line. Hover your mouse over that circle and then click and drag, and this time, rather than simply moving the grid horizontally and vertically, the grid rotates. This is useful if the grid is going to be placed at an angle. Once again, release the mouse to finalize the grid layout. After you've realigned your grid, the grid-specific quantity results update accordingly.